In this episode, I'm going to show how I set up the network share tab on my older Haas to be able to run programs from the network instead of the thumb drive. Welcome to another episode. So for the two years that I've owned this machine, almost two years, I've always run programs off the, the USB drive, the thumb drive. And there are pros and cons about that. I mean, the pro is that it always works. The, the con is that I'm having to be careful about how I take the thumb drive out of the machine to make sure that it will recognize it when I put it back in the machine. Sometimes it still won't recognize it when I put it back in the machine. But the other thing is, you know, it's extra work to uh, do all of the cam on my computer, write them out to uh, a folder on my computer, and then remember to bring the thumb drive into my office, copy all of the files over to the thumb drive, come back here, put it back in, and then load from the thumb drive. I've been wanting to use the network share, and it took me quite a while to figure out how to get it set up. I finally have it set up. I've been using it now for a little while, and I absolutely love it. So let me go and show you the, the process that I went through to get this set up on an older machine, which is the 2009 Haas OM2. Right here in my control cabinet is the hard drive, the USB, which goes to the, the front panel the, on the control. And I think this is probably the Ethernet, but I'd have to look up to make sure. I don't actually have the manual for this. So um, what I know is that, in theory, I should be able to write directly to this hard drive. Uh, but in any event, I can use the Ethernet to be able to pull files from another machine. In all the time I've been using the machine, I've been using a USB thumb drive to transfer files to the machine. And actually what I'm doing is rather than copying them to the machine, I'm loading them and running them directly from the USB drive. So let me show you a little bit more about that and a few things I've learned about the thumb drive. To load from the thumb drive, I press the list program, and then across the top, I have various tabs. Uh, memory, which is the built-in memory. It's supposed to be 16 megabytes on my machine, but apparently there's only one megabyte. Not really sure what's up with that. USB drive, hard drive, that's what I just showed you. That's a 40 gigabyte hard drive. Floppy I never use, and then net share is what we'll be looking at more in this episode. So let me first go to USB drive and then press the, the enter button, and uh, it's not showing anything, which is odd. So let me try that again. Sometimes what I discover with this is that I have to uh, power off and back on to be able to see the thumb drive, which is pretty irritating. So I'm gonna power this back on. It's going to take a, a little while to power back up. And uh, then we'll take a look at uh, the thumb drive again and, and see if it shows up. Okay, so let's try the USB drive again. There we go. So now the, the files are showing up. And uh, one of the things that I discovered is if I select a file here and say select program, that kind of locks the program on the USB drive, so if I remove the USB drive, there are issues with that. What I can do, which is something I just learned, is I can go back here, and you may not be able to see it, but there's an FMC right next to this file. So if I pr press Select Program again, the FMC goes away and it's no longer selected in here, so I can safely remove the thumb drive, which is really nice to know. I did a bunch of searching on the internet to try to figure out what FNC was all about. I did finally find a document other than this, but this document was actually really useful. What's interesting about this is that it only seems to be available on the UK Haas site. It's not available on the US Haas site. And this is also a clue, which is it's about drip feeding. So if you've used really old machines, they use something called DNC for drip feeding of data across an RS-232 port. But FNC is kind of like drip feeding, but it's faster because it uses USB. So let's talk briefly about FNC a little bit more. The first thing is I discovered that FNC is used pretty much for everything you saw on that circuit board in the controller at the beginning. In other words, it's used for the hard disk, the USB thumb drive, 
as well as for networking. I was trying to find information about it, and so I posted on a couple of uh, forums on Facebook. One of them is the Haas CNC owners. And most of the comments I got were, don't use it, it's flaky. Uh, never use F and C. Um, always load to memory. Well, uh, that's all I could really find out about it. I was trying to ask questions such as, what does flaky mean, etc. So the conclusion I came to is that it's common knowledge that you shouldn't use FNC. I was at a talk a long time ago by a computer pioneer by the name of Alan Kay. And he said something that has always stuck in my mind, which is, do you know what common knowledge is? It's something that everyone believes to be true and isn't. So I kind of use that as a mantra to try to dig deeper to understand why people may think that. I still don't know the answer to that, but I do know that I've been using the USB thumb drive with FNC for all of the, the op machining that I've been doing on this machine. And aside from having issues with it recognizing the thumb drive or not recognizing it sometimes, it's worked perfectly. So I contacted Haas directly and asked them about using FNC over the network on this over old controller. And their response was, yeah, it's fine. So my conclusion is that uh, FNC should be fine. Uh, if it isn't, it could be that you're using a thumb drive that isn't reliable or you have networking issues that are causing issues, in which case, yeah, load directly to memory. But in my case, with only one megabyte, I do have programs larger than one megabyte that don't fit into memory, so I just use FNC. Now let's take a look at the, the networking and I'll bring you in a little bit closer. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is uh, uh, take it to settings and then move over to I.O. and press right enter. First one is RS-232, second one is networking. So I've got this one uh, set up so that it's actually working correctly. And the first thing I did, which as it turns out is not that important, I'll, I'll explain that in a little bit, is I set the name of the machine to OM2. And then I set it to obtain the IP address automatically. That's using DHCP on my router. And so that's the reason that the IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway all have stars on them because they've been set for you uh, from the machine. The final thing is the, well, not the final thing, there are more as well. I did have to enter the name uh, ID of the DNS server, which I got from my uh, PC by typing ipconfig on a command line. First thing I do is I click on the start button and then I type cmd to bring up the command prompt. And then in the command prompt, I'm going to type ipconfig. I have this uh, connected via Ethernet. So this is the number I'm looking at right here, which is the default gateway number. And that's what I entered into the Haas control. Um, for domain and workgroup name, that doesn't really matter. But the remote server, I did set this up. This is the name of the server that I'm using as the remote share. This is the name of the path or the remote share on that machine, which is Haas. Um, the other things we can ignore, but what's important is that you have the net share tab enabled. And once that's the case, you can go to list program and press enter. And now you've got the different programs here, which I think is super cool uh, because I can navigate down to the different folders and I don't have to take the thumb drive back and forth. And uh, that is really, really nice. The other thing is, is, as you'll see in a little bit, I've set it so that when I output the, uh, the CAM programs, I, I output them directly to the share. So there's no extra copy operation on the computer. Going back to the uh, network tab or the settings. One thing that is important is whenever you change any of these values, you press the F1 key. And uh, it'll say this right here, press F1 to refresh settings. If you don't press that, it won't reset the network processor and those won't take uh, effect. So it's really important to do that. I'm gonna show you one other thing which I found really helpful in uh, figuring out whether or not things were working which is if we go back to list programs and we go back to the hard drive, 
there is a folder on here called admin. And it's important that you do not delete this folder and do not make any changes to it. But there are some files here and you can see I, I set this up uh, a while ago originally um, on March 9th. If we load this one, uh, we can see that it has some information here. It says um, no network, uh, check, check network settings, and then it gave some errors. If we go to the other file, which is the ipconfig.txt and load that, this has some useful information. So it says um, the domain of the machine, the uh, host name of the machine, the DNS server name, just to make sure that's okay. This has the MAC address, so I can go to my router and look at that MAC address and make sure it's uh, showing up. It says DHCP was enabled. Um, this is the IP address that it received from the DHCP server. So if you want to try to talk to that directly or diagnose things, you can look at that IP address. So I found uh, looking at these files to be really helpful. Um, the other thing, of course, is when you're done, um, again, it has FNC next to the file, so press select program again to make sure that it's, it's no longer locked. Looking at the documentation on how to get the net share tab working, something pretty simple, which is you set up a, a share on your computer uh, Windows machine and go through a bunch of steps and then it becomes visible here. I could not get that to work. It took me a while to figure out why. And the reason is because the world has evolved since they created the software for this back uh, 11 years ago or 12 years ago. At the time, there was a protocol for file sharing called SMB v1, which was supported by Windows 7 and Windows XP. Now we're in the way, days of Windows 10. And the thing about Windows 10 is that by default, they don't support SMB v1. Which is, which is for security reasons. There are some security flaws that have been discovered in SMB v1. So by default, when you install Windows, they don't enable it. So I had two choices. Either I could enable SMB v1, which I didn't want to do for security reasons, or I could take a different approach, which is to use a different system as a file server. And that's what I chose to do. This is what provides the network share. This is a Raspberry Pi Model 2 B+. They're not very expensive. They're less than $40, I believe. But you do have to add a USB power supply. Now, to set the machine up initially, I needed a keyboard and a screen. So I have a portable screen here and a wireless portable keyboard here as well that has a mouse there. And so I was able to do the initial setup work here. And I'll walk you through that now. Oh yes, and the other thing I forgot to mention is this does have uh, Wi-Fi on it. If you get one of more, the more recent Raspberry Pis, um, they have uh, Wi-Fi built in, but my plan is to, to actually not use Wi-Fi, but to use Ethernet. Um, I just didn't have an Ethernet connection uh, right here next to my desktop. Um, so I'm using a Bluetooth uh, Wi-Fi adapter at the moment, but you don't need that. You can just uh, hook it up to uh, Ethernet. The other thing you need is an SD card, which is down there right there. And of course you'll need um, an SD card reader, a micro SD card reader, if you don't get a Raspberry Pi with Raspbian already installed on it, which is the Raspberry Pi OS. They actually renamed it and it's now called the Raspberry Pi OS. So let me walk you through uh, how I set this up and show you a little bit more about the details. And by the way, I am planning to put this into a, a case that I got. Um, so that uh, I can have it uh, sitting in the corner and attached to uh, the router out of the way and out of view. I found this article, and I'll have a link below to it, that describes pretty much everything you need to do to be able to set up a Raspberry Pi as a file server. I mean, the first thing is they talk about how to set up the Raspberry Pi OS on an SD card. And then they talk about installing Samba, which is what provides the SMB v1 support for on the Raspberry Pi. And what that means is I can create a folder on the Raspberry Pi, which you do with this right here, that is available both from my desktop computer and from the Haas. So I'll be able to copy files to that folder or that share from my desktop computer 
and then they will be visible on the uh, the Haas by reading from the Raspberry Pi. Here's the Raspberry Pi on which I've already set up Samba, um, but what I'm going to do is uh, show you some of the details of how I set it up. So the first thing that they have you do, I'll just go through that quickly, is to type sudo uh, apt get and update. And what this is doing, and I've already done this, but what this is doing is is making sure, well actually I guess there are some new packages since I looked. Uh, it's making sure that everything is, is up to date in terms of the list of packages that could be installed on the operating system. And then once you've finished this step, then the next thing that they have you do is a sudo apt-get upgrade, which will upgrade the software that's on your local machine. So what I'm going to do is, is go to my home directory. And one thing about the Raspberry Pi or Linux in general is the, the tilde right there means that you're in your home directory and you use ls to look at it. So you can see I've created a directory called Haas. And if I say that dash l, it provides more information. And if we look at that directory, you can see it has uh, the files in it that, like Palette Maker, is the folder that you saw from the Haas controller. So let me show you a little bit more about how this is set up, which is described in the article. They say you want to use sudo leaf pad. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is type a few letters, then press tab and that will complete it if it's enough. And it uh, means I don't have to type as much. Now, LeafPad is a nice little uh, graphical editor, so it should be fairly familiar if you're not a Linux person. And this is the section that I added right here at the bottom. So this is home slash pi is basically saying this is the tilde directory for the user pi, which is the default user on a Raspberry Pi. And then I created this folder called, called Haas. So I'm saying make this so that others can see the files that are in there. Others can write to the file. And then the other things are some details that are not that important. You can look them up and it'll explain them. But the important one here is to make it public and to allow guests. And by making it public and allowing guests, it means you don't have to provide a password. Uh, because the Raspberry Pi is sitting on my home network, as is my Haas, I'm not too concerned about having it password protected, so I just leave the, the password off of that. But you can easily add a password if you want to. The easiest way to interact with file share is to set up a drive letter to map to the file share. To do that, you need to click on this PC first, which then shows the computer tab. And then you can say map network drive, and here you need to type in the server name and the share name in this format. So the server name is JMRI Pi2, and then the share is Haas. I want it to be connected again every time I sign in. Because I set up the share so it doesn't need a username and password, I do not need to check this. But I would need to check that it, if I did set it up with username and password. So once I click Finish, it will map that. And you can see down here now we have this mapped to drive Z. Then once you have it mapped to drive Z, you can set it up so that in Fusion, which I've already done, when I post, I have the output folder set to Z, which I did just by selecting that folder or drive Z. And so that means that instead of having to write to a location on my local machine, and then copying it to the USB thumb drive, I can write it directly to the file share, which means when I walk over to the Haas, it will be visible on the Haas right away, which is so nice. Um, it's a lot easier than having to pull out the, the drive or remembering to go to the machine to uncheck FNC, pull out the drive, come back here, update the file, and go back and forth that way. While editing this video, I realized it's really easy to get rid of the floppy tab that I never use, which is to go to Settings, and then uh, I.O., go down to the Network area, and then down here near the bottom is Floppy Tab Enabled. I can press right, and when I go to List Programs, the floppy tab is now gone. I'm absolutely delighted with being able to use the Network tab. I've used it now for about 10 operations. 
not a lot. But the thing I really like about it is that I can just write directly to the share from my computer and then load the files directly on here and I don't have to remember where I have the thumb drive, I don't have to, to copy files. It's a small thing, but it makes using the OM2 a nicer experience. I hope you found this episode useful. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, comment below. Uh, remember to click the bell icon so that you'll be notified when I have new videos. And I'll see you next time.